take that seven points of damage though so that'll be a very i, I mean he, even though he's able to deal with the shade it's been more than worth it so far uh yeah. getting off a six and then seven damage swing so its usefulness is already out there uh now dropping the uh the druid of lore uh, gets RDU, once again, the very low-cost, sort of just board-flooding minions, and he actually already has the um, the roar in his hand, too, so that is a lot of damage going to be coming Trump's way if he can't clear it. Yeah, so this is a really tough spot here. If he BGH, he only has two more mana uh, this turn. Uh, that 5-5 five five is actually going to be really, really, really bad here for Trump, so he might consider brawling here, even though he has that BGH. Uh, but Brawl is risky as well. I think, I think, I think you need to go for BGH and uh, War Axe and just hope that he doesn't have uh, enough follow-up uh, to kill you in the next couple of turns. I mean, I, ideally, if you drop the Brawl right now and win it, that's the best of all worlds. You take out a 7-7, seven, seven, a 5-5, five, five, and either you leave like the 2-1 the Argus up or you keep your Acolyte. But the BGH has to be the play here. It's the only target in the entire deck he's going to get the option to use it for. And dropping the Armorsmith at least gives him, you know, one extra armor back. And, uh, of course, it'll draw the Sludge Belcher for him as well. Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit surprised. I think that... Yeah, okay, this is gonna be really bad here. That Ooze is gonna duplicate itself into another 2 3 with Taunt. But uh, he does have Brawl, uh, but he does also have a lot of minions himself on the board. So, oh, uh, Execute, that's really, really good here. Yeah, that's... Execute will give him the ability to trade with the 6 6 and take that one out of the field. It'll also give him another card with Acolyte, too. And anytime you can get that many cards with Acolyte, it's, uh, it's pretty worthwhile, especially yeah. as a warrior. So you're definitely going to start by drawing another card with Acolyte to enable that execute as well. And then you can make the decision to uh, either brawl or play a Sledge Belcher and uh, execute that 6-6. Uh, six, six. Yeah, nine cards in his hand. As a warrior, you, you never really expect to get to this point where you just have such a huge handful of cards. So a lot of options for Trump, but he does have to play this one right. So ideally, you attack with Acolyte, see what you draw, probably then use the execute on the 6-6, six, six, and then try to trade things out. If he didn't have quite so much on the board, this would definitely be a brawl turn, but instead he yeah. will be able to trade. Yeah, he's gonna probably slam the, the shield vulture here on the table. Oh, he's actually going for the brawl anyway. That's interesting. Will Kit Kat slide this time? <laughs> he did just play the armor smith, so Kit Kat has told a couple of truths, but also a couple of lies so far this yeah. tournament. And oh, the armor smith does not survive, instead it's just used. He gets a board clear, however, he's down to 11 life, and uh, with combo, possible combo coming up in two turns, he needs to be very afraid here. He does have ever had two taunts and a shield block as well, so, so uh, double savage roar, not really the cards you want to see, but you have that Ancient of Lore to draw more cards here. Yeah, and ideally, you want to put out monsters on the field this turn and then have the potential to double Savage Roar, especially with you know the Haunted Creeper out there that'll yeah, this you know, just is, spawn in more monsters. This is a really risky play by RDU. He has, he has not seen a single Sludge Bulger yet, so uh, he has to know that that's a possibility. He's going for the next turn lethal here, hoping that his opponent does not have a Taunt uh, with double Savage Roar. Yeah, so this is kind of the worst situation that you can be in, because uh, Trump not only has one Sludge Belcher, he has two of them, and he's got a lot of uh, a lot of armor coming up these next few turns too. So both of those things will put him way away from lethal. Yeah, uh, so th there's definitely gonna be a Sludge Belcher played this turn, uh, and he wants attack first uh, because he wants to armor up afterwards because he has that shield slam in his hand. So. Yeah, so a lot of armor, a lot of taunts, a lot of just big, beefy stuff. And I feel like RDU, that five damage that he could have had on the field from the Ancient of Lore, plus the extra cards in his hand, would have been so big this turn. Uh, it's just the difference, like you said, between playing aggressive and maybe a little bit greedy, or uh, you know, yeah. trying to just play it safe and continue the ramp. It was a calculated risk here by RDU, but it didn't pay off. Um, like you, sh you, you should assume that your opponent has at least one Sledge Vulture after this many cards drawn. Um, but uh, now you're just going to have to draw cards here and hope for the second piece of your combo. Alright, well he has, 
he has two pieces of his combo, but they're the wrong two pieces. And while he does have monsters on the board, this might be a good place to just go for the Savage Roar. Um, it wouldn't give him a very clean clear, so probably just better to drop the Ancient of Lore this turn. We'll see what he draws. Cairn and Spectral Knight. Yeah, that's actually two very good draws here. Uh, two sticky, sticky minions versus Warrior. Uh, that's not easily removed. And with the double... The two Savage Roar in hand, he doesn't really need the Force of Nature here if, if he gets those minions on the board. Yeah, and Warriors only run one Brawl, and that's already out of the field. So even if he does overextend now, he's going to be safe, and they're actually going to have to be cleared one for one. Um, there is that Shield Slam that's coming up, and there's enough, uh, enough armor to at least take care of the Ancient of Lore, but some big minions coming up in the next few turns for RDU. Yeah, so we're seeing a cleave here. Uh, the addition of Cleave in this deck is to counter Hunters, and that's probably why he's like... Uh, but it's it's w actually it's weird because he's running Cleave but he's banning Hunter. I don't know for what he's running those Cleaves for. It's a kind of weird addition to the Warrior deck. There's better cards than Cleave for sure against that. I mean, it wasn't like the worst card to have in that situation. It no, cleared not the in this situation, I mean... but in general it's very, very situational card, Cleave. Yeah, I mean, you always feel really good when you use it. You're just like, hey, I killed two two health minions. Wasn't that cool? And then you realize you're running cleave in your deck. And yeah, you have second thoughts about that. But some big weapons in his hand. It's turn nine, so there's always the possibility of Ysera. Um Is that a good card to go for here? Or do you want to continue to taunt uh, up and maybe throw down a he's, weapon? He's counting here. Um, he's counting if he's dead to uh, the combo here, uh, which he is for sure, if, if uh, RDU has it. Uh, I'm not sure if he's dead to double Savage Shore. Um, no, because you have to swing or... twice through the, uh, yeah, through the Sledge yeah, it's not that It's not dead to double Savage Shore, but if he had the, the Force of Nature, he would have been dead. And that's what Masan is, I mean, Trump is realizing here. So he's going to play a second taunt here just to be safe. And he's going to try to get a board clear here with the Death Bite uh, for next turn, the Whirlwind Effect. Yeah, so he will have that ability to clear out the board, but especially now if he uses that to, uh, if he was trying for like a full board clear and was able to kill off the Haunted Creeper this turn, that'd just make the, the combo worse. So he's just going to phase there, and I think that's the first time he's really done damage to RDU this game. So yeah. tempo. So been in he needs to um, know that the... Uh... The Death Bites Death Rattle will affect the board greatly next turn. So he needs to make some kind of nice plays here to try to play around that uh, by sacrificing the 1-1. One, one. Uh, I, I would like to see uh, a Spectre and Light uh, on the board. But we'll see what he decides to do here. I mean, he does have the ability to at least clear out one of, uh, clear out the other Sludge Belchers just to swing through. Uh, but yeah, it's like, what do you do? Do you try to, you don't really need to taunt at this position if you're already you. You're not really worried about too yeah. much coming out there. So, but He's he does play the Spectral that. Knight. And I, I do believe it's the correct choice here. Uh, I'm not so sure about the positioning. Uh, maybe you want it next to the Cairn if you get your Argus. Um, I'm not sure. Or did he use yeah. two Argus already? He used one, I know, but... Yeah, I two. think he only used one, so he still yeah. has another one in his deck. There's a lot of taunts in there, a lot of just, you know, stuff out on the board, and especially now, now more than ever, Trump is just dead next turn. So what does he have for options? I, I mean, oh. yeah, he can clear things with... Or he could have cleared things with the Death Bite, Death Rattle, but yeah. that's yeah, he not actually really used an option. He both anymore. Arguses now that I, that I think about it. He actually used both, but... Uh, hmm. So he's gonna have to somehow he needs to kill that uh, one one spider token. So he summons the, the one one tokens and uh, try to clear as much as possible. But that Karen being at uh, two HP is actually quite annoying. So there is a possible play here, and uh, that is executing the Karen. And yeah, he's gonna go for it. Executing the Karen, you hit the Karen with your weapon, you kill the Karen, uh, and you kill the tokens because you're trading with the sledge vulture as well. Oh All no, right. he's going for that. Oh wow. Okay. Wait. Oh baby, that is uh, not quite a triple. It's going to be uh, one way to clear out some of the board. It enrages the Gromash, so he's able to k kill off the Spectral Knight. And it's not quite a board clear, but when you use Gromash that way, like that's kind of your win condition as Warrior a lot of times. He's not yeah. going to have that now. I would 
much rather have him s like mm, what could he have drawn from the shield block here I, I think he was thinking about the odds of him drawing something useful compared to actually playing the groom here and i think the groom might have been a better choice um uh, because if you uh shield block that turn you don't have enough mana to play groom you can only play a weapon and you can't use the weapon that turn because you already have a weapon equipped so he was thinking about that uh, but he does have lethal now with double savage sure here and the charge so kind of fortunate for trump but he did his best to stay alive it's exact lethal oh my gosh yeah he didn't even that that's pretty impressive there is no overkill at all just an exact lethal turn there for rdu at the end of the game Trump did his best, he came out with the Gravish at the end and tried to clear as much, but just leaving that one minion on the field, that was the end of it. So, first win of the day there for RDU is Druid. And like you said, coming out with a Druid, you hope that you can maybe play a little bit greedy and get the first win with the Druid. Maybe not survive the entire tournament with a 3-0, but he's off to a good start with that game one win so now we get to find out what deck trump is going to play next and before we do i do want to take this opportunity to mention a little bit of a giveaway that we're doing we should have a a little sticky post up there in case you guys want more info but essentially if you follow this channel on hitbox if you just click the follow button right down below we're doing a raffle where we'll be giving away two 20 euro blizzard um uh, EU balance cards. So if you guys are looking to pick up some extra packs for your Hearthstone accounts, we'll be giving away 20 year two 20 euro Blizzard cards uh, for you to be able to uh, to do those. And all you have to do is click the follow button. So you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to you know subscribe or do whatever. All you have to do is click the follow button right down below the screen, and that'll get you a entered into the contest to win two 20 euro Blizzard balance cards. So I just wanted to mention that. Now we're hopping into our second game of the series between Trump and RDU, and Trump's going to go with his Miracle Rogue. Wow, this is going to be interesting to see. I always love to see other play, uh, players play Miracle. Uh, it's always interesting for me. And uh, he decides to mulligan his own ha whole hand here, and I think it's the correct choice because you do want to get go for those uh, Auctioneer and Drakes. Um, Forcer is really useless because you're not taking any damage until later on in the, later on stages in the game. Yeah, and uh, specifically to the uh, the Druid deck that RDU is playing, he's not playing like the big taunt wall Kel'Thuzad style of Druid. Uh, he's not even really playing like a rampy style Druid because there is so so much early game to his deck. It's more of like a token style, but you know, you mentioned um, uh, the exact style earlier on. This is how, how does this work out for Miracle Rogue? Because I, I feel like Miracle Rogue is like always a decent deck to play into most things, but uh, specifically into the deck RDU is playing. Yeah, so he has the double Defender of Argus here, which is a problem for Miracle Rogue, since they only have a limited number of saps. Uh, he's also running the Druid of the Claws, and he's running Spectral Knights. If Spectral Knights actually gets taunted by an Argus, it's gonna be so hard for Trump to remove that. And I think that's why he decided to keep the Blade Fairy, because that's one of the only ways you can remove uh, Spectral Knight efficiently. Yeah, so keeping the blade flurry, uh, he would have needed to also have the um, uh, some some way to way to use that, but that would be much later on in the game. So at least for right now, he's got an early Van Cleef. I guess that doesn't help him too much. It does have at least you know that uh, the backstab oh, in hand? He'll I'm, go ahead and I'm use it. actually very very surprised by that play. When you have a Van Cleef in your hand, you don't want to waste your backstab like that. Uh, you could just have waited one turn and done the same thing uh, and get a 4 4 rank cleave on the table. That was a really weird play, actually. I guess he's thinking about using the the early weapon effectively to clear the harvest golem, but he's just going to be facing another harvest golem. Now, where's your backstab? Yeah, uh, I mean, he could have had a 4 4 rank cleave this turn uh, to apply counter pressure, but uh, now that's not a possibility. So he's going to wait until turn 4 to poison and make a 4 4 rank cleave instead. I mean, Trump does have the Deadly Venom with the Blade Flurry in his hand, so that's that's good, and it'll be able to clear the shade if yeah. that's the, the way he this wants to deal with it. This is another reason why I think he uh, kept the Blade Flurry, because you can deal with that Shade of Naxxramas before he snowballs out of control, and I think that's what he's going to do now with the Blade Flurry and Poison, attacking the Horus Golem. And that's actually really big, because this is a difficult board to deal with. You've got a minion with Death Rattle, you've got a minion with Stealth, and almost the perfect way to... wait... 
Yeah, I did, it, did, it did decide go, to go for the Van Cleef and wait one turn with the Blade Fury, but that's actually kind of greedy because we know that he plays double Argus. If he would have had a double Argus, uh, if he would have had an Argus here, he could have traded with that Van Cleef uh, and played around Blade Fury a bit. Yeah, but now he's actually playing right into Blade Flurry, and I mean, you have to know that maybe a Blade Flurry is coming up, but this is actually a great Blade Flurry turn for, for Trump. Yeah, I mean, he needs a Blade Flurry here. If he gets off a uh, Savage Roar here with those so many minions, oh it's my over. God. <laughs> he's even got a spell power in too, so this Blade Flurry is going to be absolutely nuts. God, that was a huge turn for Trump, and already you throwing out the well played. Yeah, this is uh, really, really bad for uh, RDU. He's stuck with two cards in hand, and those two cards are the combo, which he won't be able to use for another four turns. Uh, so, yeah, no card is... draw either. So he's just gonna be top decking for now. Throws out the the low theft. I guess that's not the worst card he could have had, given the number of spells that Trump might want to play. But he's already got so much on the board that he can just trade out with it and still be in a better position. Yeah, uh, that Lothab basically did nothing that turn because he was going to play a 5-drop anyway uh, as a Drake or Lothab, so it actually did nothing. He did however pick up a Spectre Knight here, which is a really, really good pickup uh, against an Acid Drake. Yeah, it'll stick around. He can't kill it next turn because it's untargetable by spells. And I, I guess for Trump's options next turn, uh, he's got you know Lothab that he can drop down. He's also got... I guess he can't backstab or do anything like that, so... Uh, I guess it's just a Lothab turn, depending on what he draws. He's actually uh, decided to clear that, which is uh, pretty strange here. Uh, I would have preferred playing the Spectrum Light. Uh, if that was an Auctioneer, I would have understood his decision, but it, it was just an Acid Drake. Uh, not much that an Acid Drake can do, really, versus a Spectrum Light, because he's not, uh, he's not able to be targeted by spells. Yeah, and especially since he's coming up on the combo in three turns, like, you're really hoping to draw your other half of the combo, or at least draw some minions to put out there on the board, and I don't think RDU is going to be able to do that. I mean, he throws down the Spectral Knight this turn, but is that, like, a turn too late? Yeah, so there is still no Auctioneer in uh, in uh, Trump's hand now, though. He picks up a Sap, which is useless, because he can Sap a Spectral Knight here. Uh... He can, however, kill that Spectral Knight with the Lothab and Dagger, and then heal the Lothab back up. Uh, he could even Shadow Step the Lothab to prevent uh, more spells being cast from RDU. Uh, but I do think just just uh, healing the Lothab up again and uh, estab establishing your board control is better here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, I mean, even though... Trump is uh, he's not playing a priest or a, a mage. He could definitely use some, some arcane intellect. Figure out how to deal with this. He'll clear it out there with the weapon, but that puts him at 11 life. So if he heals the Lothab here, and it does look like he's going to do that, he is in kill range from a lot of different things in RDU's hand. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, here, how many damage? Oh my god. Uh, did did he getting just... So no, he's getting so close to lethal right now. It's not lethal just yet. Uh, he needs to get him a little bit lower. But Trump is not really super afraid of the combo here now that he's seen uh, the first piece of the combo being wasted on Acid Drake. So he's feeling confident healing the loaf up there instead of himself. All right. Well, he's. Uh, I think he's three. Yeah, he's three damage uh, off lethal right now. This is the but... play that I was thinking about. Uh, you put your opponent in lethal range for next turn, but. He needs to realize this. Uh, Trump needs to realize that uh, RDU has lethal, otherwise he would never do that. So he needs to shadow step his Farseer here to stay alive. And uh, shiving the 2-4 the, the here and trading with the Farseer into shadow stepping it and healing yourself is the only play that's good here. Yeah, and it'll continue to keep Trump out of lethal just one more turn. <laughs> but, oh, he picks oh. up another. Uh, that's actually huge. Oh my god, because now he doesn't have to shadow step that. He can yeah, save that. He, I think he's going to shadow step the loath up here, um, actually. And no, he's shadow stepping his Farseer. He's really afraid here. I do not understand why, because he picked up a second Farseer. Yeah, and so, so. that means that you can't... I, and the loath up really protects him as much as gaining extra health protects him too. Because it keeps him away from the combo. So... so let's see here. He needs to pick up another piece of the combo. He need, if he top decks uh, Force of Nature here, he wins. Yeah, exactly. And there's actually a lot that he could top deck here too. Why? Uh, he won't yeah, be able you to. See, that's oh why my god. He wouldn't be able to be played uh, if he shadow stepped his Lothab. 
Oh, he's actually not gonna swipe the Lotha. He's just going face here. Uh, <laughs> interesting. He has lead the next uh, turn with that play. Is very aggressive, and I mean it doesn't put anything out there on the board. So having all these minions, you, I mean you can deal damage with them, but damage isn't what you're wanting right now. If you're yeah. Trump, you gotta Trump, keep yourself Trump alive. Has not, Trump can do nothing here. He's actually dead. He can't shadow step anything. If he would have shadow stepped uh, that uh, Lothab, uh, he wouldn't be white that turn, and it might have saved him. Um, but then he would have three he less health. So yeah. Is that yeah, Trump is pretty dead. Like you said, the Lotheb didn't stop anything from being played last turn, and with only six health, that's combo range for just about anything. And of course, we know that RDU has that in his hand. So, oh my god, he's trying desperately. Like, let me put out as much damage as I can, and it's just not enough. So, RDU didn't just get one win with his Druid, he's gonna pick up two wins in a row. Throws out the well played, and there is the uh, ancient or Druid of the Claw, the combo, the roar, and the six damage right to the face, plus the, uh, of course, hero power damage. So, well played, RDU, two wins. All right, Interesting well, game. Pretty, yeah, pretty it, back and forth. I didn't think that uh, he, RDU was going to win that actually after wasting a combo on the Nasty Drake there, but uh, he got some good top decks and it paid off. He did, and especially with uh, that not shadow stepping the Lothep there at the, at the end of the game. That was uh, maybe not, not a play worthy of value town, but even still, this is going to be where we find out if RDU's choice to ban Trump's Warlock was actually the right ban to go with, because now he has to face up against Trump's Hunter. And this is almost the same situation that he found himself in yesterday versus Alchemix. When it comes down to it, Trump or Alchemix brought out the Hunter, and just barely at the end, RDU is able to bring it back. But now Trump with a Hunter of his own. Uh, he's got the Leroy in there. He's got a lot of early options. So a almost perfect opening hand for Trump. And uh, noteworthy to say is that this Druid is actually stronger than uh, most Druids against uh, uh, Hunter because of those double Arguses uh, and Spectral Knights. Uh, they prevent. Uh, if you if you get your Spectral Knight uh, taunted in this matchup, it's kind of the same with Miracle Rogue. He can't get Hunter's Mark, he can't get uh, Kill Commanded. So it's just a really, really beefy and sticky minion on the board. Yeah, and, uh, okay, drawing into a Leroy is not, gonna, not what he wants. Of course, the chicken, oh, also oh probably God. not what he wants. He got the chicken. <laughs> the chicken hype. Hey, at least it's not a hungry crab, though. Although I I think Trump is more familiar with playing hungry crabs than a I lot think, of players. I think the hungry crab is better than the chicken, actually. Uh, you need a hound master on that chicken. Otherwise, it's just completely useless in this matchup. On the upside, though, if he does get a hound master on the chicken, that's one scary chicken. But, of course, uh, Hound Mastering Chicken's probably not what Trump is wanting to foresee in his future. So he goes for the tracking, and he picks the Buzzard out of all three of those. Do uh, you yeah. think that was the right... I mean, he obviously needs the Buzzard as quickly as possible. You, but... need, the co you, need, the, you need to go for the combo versus uh, this kind of uh, token slash uh, midrange uh, hunter, Adam and Druid. Uh, those those oozes and those spiders they they spawn so many tokens so you want those unleashed as quickly as possible. And now especially with Argus coming out next turn, this is what is going to give RDU such a big tempo swing. He gets taunts. They're big taunts too, and he can trade out with that spider. Oh my god, RDU! How does he get the best hand every time? This is big yeah, big swing I, in his favor. I do believe that he needs to play the explosive trap here. Uh, he does have the coin as well, so he might consider tracking right now. Um, but what do you really want? You want Unleash for sure, but if you track for Unleash, you can't play the Unleash combo this turn. So he's just gonna go ahead and Explosive and track next turn. Yeah, an Explosive will be very big here. It takes care of your ooze problem, it'll get rid of the taunts too. But uh, I think it, you know, it only works when you hit the hero, so maybe still Oh, but he picks up there. an Argus here. My god! And that Argus will actually keep that second ooze alive. But he's... Uh, oh, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to save it. He, he, he want to play around Unleash here, and that's why he's sacrificing those. Because those would have been really weak minions if they survived. And uh, that would have just been the end if he got Unleash on that. 
Yeah, really smart by RDU. He has good plays in his hand, but he's choosing not necessarily to just go for the most value, but rather to counterplay around what his opponent has. So just really smart there. He plays around Unleash, and of course, we know that Trump doesn't necessarily have that, but he will be able to track for half of it. You can tell he's digging for the hounds right yeah, now. Yeah, he needs to pick up the animal companion here. Um, and hopefully, he will get something like Huffer or Misha. Oh, but that's really rough because it gets rid of his second explosive trap and versus this sort of, um, uh, like you said, tokeny style of druid that RDU is playing. Uh, it's uh, just going to be a rough few turns. Now, he can take care of the druid of the claw, so at least that's out of the picture and the board is relatively even. But RDU has got tons of options in his hand. Yeah, and now we got a second uh, Ooze Argus combo here, which is really, really good. So he needs that unleash right now. And. I think actually here, uh, you need to gamble. You can't play the Savannah High Main because you're dead to Savage Shore. Um, you need to so go you for Buzzard, Buzzard chicken? and Chicken. I think so, man. It, it's very, very risky, <laughs> but I mean, you have the In coin as well. Uh, yeah. So if you, got, if you get something like uh, Timberwolf, uh, you could keep uh, cycling for that Unleash, but I don't know, Kev. I mean, you can't play the Savannah High Main. That's oh sure. man, and so once again, it comes down to the chicken to save Trump's life. If he plays that and gets the combo, the game is totally turned around. Plus he's going to have a ton of cards in his hand too, so he'll be able to keep playing those. Um, and he's, two of the cards in his hand right now are zero mana, so he can dump those so he doesn't overdraw. So, yeah. big turn for Trump. Does he gamble for it, or is he going to go for a safer play? I think he has to play the Hunter's Mark, it's just he, good to get that gonna, out of your hand. He's going to see if he gets a... Ch oh, he gets the Hunger Crab. I was just saying that, that... Oh no, it's not gonna... Okay. I guess it's fine now because he's still alive because he hunters marked that, but um, that hu that Hungry Crab can actually recycle uh, a card cheaply and in order to get that unleash. But with that Lotha being played, there is nothing Trump can do here to stay alive next for next turn. Yeah, that's that's exactly why you see Lotheb in every single deck. If some of you are new to the new to Hearthstone or you haven't played through Nax Ramus yet, yet we well, should definitely go do that. And one of the reasons you'll see the the Lotheb played in every single deck is because of this. You have an advantage on the board and you play Lotheb, it almost guarantees that there's no possible way that you can lose that advantage next turn. Especially oh if your God. opponent's so far he behind. He actually got the Hound Monster here. Uh, what on earth? But it's not going to save him, I think. Um, no, it's not going to save him, actually, from um, the, the, the Savage Shore and Wrath. Yeah, that's just too much damage. He he can go for the taunt. I think that's you know what he has to do there just to keep himself alive. But the roar just oh my god, too yeah, much this, damage coming this next is, turn. This is this is lethal here. Um, so yeah, Trump getting three would again by RDU. And three would with this druid too. Like we didn't expect this to go past maybe one game, but oh my god, just too much damage coming out there. There is well played RDU. This RDU had taken down three games in a row versus Trump and taking him out of the tournament. Yep. And really rough games for Trump. He, I, I felt like he had the best shot of all there at the end, but he just couldn't draw into the, uh, the Unleash combo. So rough draws for Trump at the end. Uh, the chicken power wasn't enough there, but it did. It got him close. It gave him some glimmers of hope that this never paid off. So that's yeah, going to do it. It basically came down to RDU getting those Ooze and Argus combo off twice.